In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Bamboo's A1 printer along with the AMS to see if it's truly one of the best beginner 3D printers out there. But like any 3D printer, there's some downsides. It launched about six months ago, but with that launch, there was one major issue. This power cord back here had a problem with it and Bamboo ended up doing a total recall but they ended up giving customers who purchased it a few options to resolve this issue. This is the new updated version of it, so we're not really gonna go into the power cord or the unboxing, as there's tons of YouTube videos out there going in tons of detail on how to, or what all happened with that. So instead, we're gonna look at this printer and see the ups and downs I've found with it over the past several weeks running it, and see if it's truly one of the best 3D printers out there for beginners. In full transparency, Bamboo did send me this printer along with some filament to print some pretty cool stuff, but I don't have a contract, I can say whatever I want. I've had this for about three weeks and put about 200 hours or so into it. So what type of filaments can you print with this printer? This printer is more so geared towards beginners, I feel, and it's an open printer. So it says on here ABS, but most likely you're gonna be just printing with PLA and other general filaments. So PLA, PTAG, TPU are generally what you're gonna print on this. If you're interested in printing more complex filaments that need the enclosure, I would probably look at other printers like the P1S, the Q1 Pro, or something like the Creality K1C. And as an entry level printer, I think that PLA is a majority of what you're gonna use. If you need a little more durability or something like that, you could go to PTAG. If you need flexibility, you could do something like TPU. And PLA is just fine for a majority of things, anything around the house, organization, except like outside or in your car, PLA is gonna do just fine. It's also affordable and there's a tons of different types of PLA, colors, sparkle, marble. The options are endless with PLA. So I don't think it's a huge issue, especially if you're just getting started in 3D printing. So let's talk about the AMS. You by no means need the AMS, but I think it's a super cool feature. And my first printer was the Bamboo X1C and I got the AMS with that machine and I think it's absolutely amazing. I'm not a huge fan of multicolor printing and I'll explain that why, which is one of the major downfalls of this printer. Well, not so much this printer, but multicolor printers in general, which I'll hit on in a second. And one thing to note about the AMS is you can't just put any spool on it. As it holds it on from the center of the spool, the spools have to have the correct diameter. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend sticking to the bamboo spools right away anyways, as they all have a chip inside of them. And when you load it into the AMS, the printer knows exactly what spool is attached thus making it easier to not have to worry about print settings. And not all spools have the same inner diameter. So as you can see here, it's an issue and they just fall off. But thanks to Maker World and other creators, you can find these spool adapters that work with pretty much any spool on the market. So there is a workaround, but it's just one thing to note if you don't want to use bamboo filaments. I mainly use Sunlu and there's an exact Sunlu adapter on Maker World. And whether you're into multicolor printing or not, I would definitely recommend the AMS if it's in your budget, just because it makes the swapping over spools and everything like that so much easier. And also if you're printing a bunch of the same thing, you can put a bunch of rolls of black PLA in here, for example, and when you run out, it'll just hop over to the next slot, which is super great. You don't gotta worry about it, it's hands off. You literally just shove it in this hole and it feeds it and does all that stuff on its own. And with bamboo spools, it automatically knows what filaments attach, but if it's a generic filament, you can load and unload here manually. They also recommend against using TPU in the AMS due to its flexibility, but you can just run it directly with the filament holder provided. I did run into one issue doing multicolor prints with this Sunlu red color, and as you can see here, there's a little bit of an under extrusion, and I think that's because the AMS was slipping. And it also gave me some error code when it was switching between filaments and I couldn't figure out why. And then after a few prints and several error codes, I narrowed it down to this red filament by Sunlu. And it's actually a little bit under spec, just under 1.6 millimeters. And then you look at the bamboo filament and it's just over 1.7 millimeters. My bamboo X1C also has an AMS and I've never had that issue with it slipping or anything. I did do a print directly driven into the head and it printed just fine. It was when I was doing the multicolor prints with a bunch of different filament changes and it was just slipping over here when I was trying to feed it in and out of the head multiple times. So that little bit of thinness on this one random red Sunlu filament caused it to throw those error codes. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, it's just something worth mentioning that happened to me when I was printing. Let's quickly go over some features of the printer. The screen works great, it's very similar to the one on X1C, very responsive and easy to navigate. And then onto the camera, the light doesn't do a whole lot and the camera itself is okay. It does its job, but it's nothing fancy. 
The picture is pretty clear, but it's very laggy and has a very low frame rate, and the angle of it's kind of pointing a little too far down. The Bamboo ecosystem also has an app called the Bamboo Handy app, so you can open up the app on your phone, look at a bunch of different files you want to print right on Maker World. But my favorite part of it is I can be in the house, on the couch, something goes wrong, it sends me a notification, I can open up the camera, check it out. But as you can see, and we mentioned earlier, the camera is not the best, but it's a still a cool feature. You can see the, what's going on on the printer right on your phone. So I think the app's great. Camera could use work, but again, it's a $450, $500 printer. The X1C printer camera is amazing, but it's also two, three times the cost of this printer. All the structural components of this machine are metal, and there's also no V-wheels, which is amazing and requires less maintenance. Those of you who've run older machines know the V-wheels can be a little bit frustrating. This texture PEI sheet that comes with the printer is great. It's reversible. I have no issues with it. And this smooth plate came with my Bamboo X1C, and it fits on here as well. One thing that's nice is you can easily just slap it on there, and it lines up nicely. I only used glue stick one time with this machine and it was when I was using TPU as it can stick pretty hard. Once the plate cools, parts come off super easy. The bamboo does a great job at the noise canceling calibrations it does. The printer is not that loud. Would I want it in my bedroom while I'm sleeping? No. But if it was in the next room with the door closed, I don't think you'd hear it. It's also not quite as loud as like the P1S or the X1C. It also has a load of other features like full auto calibration, bed leveling, but I honestly wouldn't recommend a printer nowadays that doesn't have bed leveling, so they should all have that at this point, but this bed leveling and first layer does work great. The A1 does have a power loss resume feature. We had a pretty bad storm and the power was out for about 15 minutes. I went back to resume the print that was 93% of the way there, but unfortunately by the time it rehomed and rewarmed up the plate, one of the pieces had released and I had to stop and fail the print. So it does work, but you need to keep in mind that once the plate cools, the parts will release and it can no longer print. So speed, all these printers today are about speed. How fast is this printer? To me, it's kind of irrelevant because all these printers today are drastically faster than printers five years ago. So as long as these print well, I'm pretty happy. This printer is not quite as fast as the Bamboo X1C or the P1S, but it's still pretty quick. It's plenty fast to me. Personally, I want quality over speed, and at the speeds they print now, I think they print plenty fast enough. I could honestly care less if it takes eight hours or nine hours to print something, as long as it looks good in the end. The acceleration of this machine is about half that of the Bamboo X1C due to its bed slinger nature. So the Bamboo X1C is about 20,000, and this machine's about 10. But again, I think these things are still plenty fast. And what's a 3D printer without talking about a Benchy? So let's take a look at this Benchy and how long it took to print this. Ooh. It makes noises. But you can disable this if it annoys you. And this Benchy here took 21 minutes with the startup sequence and all that. And that's plenty fast. So it did have a little bit of warping, but I do need to clean my bed as it's been a while. This is just basic Sunlu PLA, and as you can see, it looks pretty dang good. Minus the little warping lines, this thing is pretty clean. Now let's talk about waste. The biggest downfall of these machines, or any machine that prints multicolor, except like the Prusa. I think the Prusa is the only one that has the multi-head that doesn't really waste much, and it can print colors pretty cohesively. Um, but this printer and the X1C both have the AMS that can do the multicolor. I never was much into multicolor just because it takes drastically longer to print stuff, and the amount of waste is insane. But from $450 on sale to $550 not on sale, you're not gonna get multicolor with a bunch of multi heads at any sort of affordable price. So let's take a look at this little Pikachu along with this follow guy to see how much filament it used, wasted, and how much longer it took, just with all the different filament changes. Okay, so we have the follow guy we printed here. Let's take a look at the volumes this thing is using and wasting. So just here it used 3.1 grams and then wasted 6.2. You can see this the whole way down. So it essentially purges twice as much as it uses. And then 18 it used, purged 93, 24, purged 82. And you can see it's pretty safe to assume you're gonna waste twice as much as you use. But then when we look at 3D prints like this with multicolor, where it's essentially changes at a layer and stays that color, it practically wastes none. 
So these are the most realistic use of multicolor that's not gonna waste a bunch of filament. All right, so let's take a look at Pikachu here. Pikachu is one, two, three, four different colors. So we used hardly any filament for the white, but we purged 12 grams. Hardly any filament for the black, but we purged 17 grams. Yellow, we used 30, we purged 73. And then 1.2, 13 grams we purged. So we wasted 115 grams of filament, and that doesn't even include the tower back here, which is another 23 grams of filament. And this small little Pikachu model took nine hours and 17 minutes, and that's because the 199 filament changes. And this guy took 17 hours. And as you can see, the 3D printing in multicolor is very cool, but it's also very wasteful. And I print more functional things, so this kind of stuff just isn't something I use a ton of, but it's really cool to have the ability to do it. And here you can see all the waste from a couple things I've printed in multicolor, and there are ways to reduce this, it's just not something I've spent the time to figure out and mess with as I don't do a ton of multicolor printing. So let's take a look at some prints I've printed on this machine. I've printed some silk PLA, some TPU, and a bunch of different types of PLA. This was printed with the PLA Sparkle, and this thing printed beautifully. And this is Bamboo's PLA Marble, which printed beautifully. This is a pretty cool filament and a beautiful first layer. And this is G-Tech PLA Silk, which is pretty hard to print sometimes, and this printed great. This is the Fallout Nuka-Cola Blaster, which I got all these files on Maker World, so if you want to check those out, check out those. I am not this good at modeling. But this thing printed pretty good, and everything printed perfect except these little rings here, but I think it was just the steep overhangs with no support, because the rest of it looks pretty dang good. This sparkle printed perfect. And then I printed these knockoff Crocs with TPU95, and the bottom printed great. But when it started getting to the top, it lost a little bit of quality, but I think it's just because the bed slinger is moving so much, and the TPU is pretty soft. So I would add supports or print this in a Core XY printer. But they're pretty cool, and actually kind of comfy. And this is Sunloop PLA with just a stock profile. I didn't tweak anything, and you can see the details on this thing are great. There's a little bit of under extrusion on the shoulder, so I should have added a little bit of flow rate, but... For just a stock profile with no tweaking, I can't complain. And for ease of use, it's super easy to use, especially if you're using the bamboo filaments as it knows what to run those filaments at. Although I do highly recommend you learn how to tune a filament and learn how to troubleshoot those kind of things. So if something does come up, it's not super frustrating and you can easily fix it. So let's hop into the computer and show you how easy it is to get this thing running. This is Bamboo's Maker World, where there are a ton of free files on here, awesome creators that have tons of skill that give all these files away for free. You can come on here and find something you want to print. So let's print this flex articulated snake. So you select your printer, A1, download and print, open in Bamboo Studio. So then now that it's imported into the slicer, you're gonna to click to make sure you have the correct printer selected here and that it fits on your build plate. So we have this and then we'll slice it. And people have most of this stuff preset as you download it from the Bamboo Maker World into the slicer. So now that our articulated snake is sliced, it will cost you $4.06 and take about 13 hours to print. So we'll go ahead and click print. So let's make sure you have the correct printer selected. And then as it's linked, you click down here and it tells you what colors you have in the printer. I have a bunch of boring colors in there now, so let's just print it out of white and send it to the printer. And just like that, your machine will pretty much start printing. One thing to mention that some people really dislike about this company is Bamboo is a closed source company. And what that means is you can't interchange a bunch of parts. All the parts for this printer are proprietary to Bamboo. But if you go to their website and look at their parts, their prices aren't excessive and they're relatively easy to get. Also, it's a closed source printer, so you can't go inside here and mess with a bunch of different settings and change a bunch of stuff. If you're someone that likes to tinker and tear these things apart, I would check out a company like Creality or Kitty because them are both open source printers running on Clipper, allowing you to go in there and mess with a bunch of different stuff. This printer, you send stuff to it, it just prints. If you're not a tinkerer and just want it to run, great. Me personally, I don't want to tear this thing apart and change a bunch of parts. I just want to send files to it and it prints pretty decent at a relatively fast speed. So what does that mean in like normal tech terms? What this means is Bamboo is essentially like the Apple of 3D printers and companies like Creality and Kitty are like the Android and have more flexibility in what you can do with them. I have a MacBook. And I think this printer is more than enough for starting out. Again, it's way more budget friendly than other models. And unless you're looking to print ABS, ASA, or like PC, this thing can pretty much do it all. 
this printer with the AMS on sale right now was like $450, and that is an absolute steal. If you look at some of the Prusa printers, an assembled printer is like $1,000. So I just think this is a great entry point. I would personally buy this over the A1 Mini just because the A1 Mini is pretty small, and I think you're gonna outgrow it pretty quick and want that little extra bed space. But again, budget. Budget's what's gonna pick the printer for you essentially when you're looking for printers because not everyone wants to spend $1,300 on a Bamboo X1C. This will be the last review style video we post on this channel. I have a whole nother channel that we started called Two Boost 2, which will be strictly for reviews, comparing 3D printers, unboxing 3D printers, different CNC stuff and other tool things. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description and follow that channel. Our next video will be unboxing and using the FL Sun S1, which is a pretty exciting new printer. So if you wanna follow that stuff, please follow along. We appreciate it as this channel will be left just for building and other DIY projects. And overall, I think this is a great printer. For the price, I think it's an absolute steal. We have an affiliate link down in the description and I'll put it in the first comment if you wanna support the channel. We get a small kickback at no cost to you. And now, is this the best beginner 3D printer out there? I think it's a great printer and I definitely think it's up there. It prints beautifully, it's super easy to use. I personally like the Bamboo ecosystem and all the stuff they have going on there. Is it the best printer? I think that's a stretch of a statement as it's gonna depend on what you wanna print, how much your budget is and all that stuff. But I would highly recommend this printer, especially for the price they have it right now.